Hi guys, and welcome to Reading with Miss Scott tonight. Um, tonight I'm going to be reading you Miss Alanius, A Vocabulary Disaster by Deborah Fisher. This is one of my very favorite books, and I fell in love with it when I first started teaching reading and um, realized how important knowing what multiple meaning words are and how to use context clues to figure those out. So, um, I hope you enjoy Miscellaneous as much as I did. <clears throat> None of this would have happened if it wasn't for Forrest. Forest is not a thicket of trees. Forest is a boy, a sick boy, a boy sneezing and coughing all over my desk and pencils. I caught Forest cold, and I had to stay home from school on Tuesday. Tuesday is vocabulary day at Webster School. Follow my advice. Never get sick on vocabulary day. On Tuesday afternoon, I called my best friend, Star who is not a luminous celestial object as seen as a point of light in the sky, but a very smart girl who listens perfectly on vocabulary day. She was late for baseball practice, so she spelled the first 14 vocabulary words as best she could. I had to scribble them quickly because her mom was calling her to the car. The last one's miscellaneous, Star yelled. I gotta go. I hope you feel better tomorrow, Sage. And she hung up the phone with a crash. I didn't feel much better on Wednesday, so my mom called Mrs. Page, who is not a single side of a printed sheet of paper usually found bound in a book. She's my teacher, and actually, sorry, she's my teacher, and actually Mrs. Page is a good name for her because she reads to us every day. My mom told her, yes, I had my math problems and vocabulary words, and yes, I would get better soon. Every week, Mrs. Page gives us a list of words with a theme, like story writing, or musical performance, or electricity. We're supposed to look up each word in the dictionary, but sometimes I already know the words, so I try to make the definitions look like I looked them up. You're noticing something right here. Tree, a large leafy plant with a tall wooden trunk that pushes roots into the ground and branches into the sky. Automobile, a vehicle used to transport humans, usually consisting of four wheels, a steering wheel, and a radio. I thought I was pretty good at definitions until this week. My mom says, pride goeth before a fall. Pride. An unduly high opinion of oneself. Goeth. Old English for to go. Fall. What happened on Monday? Vocabulary test day. By Thursday afternoon, my head felt like it was stuffed with cotton and my throat felt swollen shut. I finished defining my vocabulary words while propped up in bed with a box of tissues on one side and a gigantic red dictionary on the other. It's hard to look up words with a huge book when you're blowing your nose and coughing and feeling awful. So I made up my own dictionary language for as many words as I could. Hypothesis, what you guess will happen in your science experiment. Category, a bunch of things that are alike. Miss Alanius. Hmm. That last word seemed a little odd to me because I couldn't figure out what she had to do with snakes or categories or theories. Mrs. Page rarely gives us people's names on our vocabulary list, but we have had a few that turned into words, like Louis Pasteur for pasteurization and George Washington for Washington, D.C., so I decided she must have been included for a reason. Hmm. You should 
know that for years I had wondered who Miscellaneous was. When I was little, I figured out that she had something to do with the kitchen because the miscellaneous drawer held the spoons too big to fit anywhere else, those sharp corn holders shaped like little tiny combs, and that spaghetti spork, the weird cross between a spoon and a fork that perfectly lifts the slippery spaghetti out of the bowl. I thought that maybe she was an ancestor, an ancient relative long dead, who left us all these odd things in the drawer. Then, just last year, my mom and I were at the grocery store, and it all fell into place. We were in one of those very big hurries that she said. You go get some long Italian bread and two sticks of butter. I'll get miscellaneous things and meet you at the cash register. So I ran and found the bread and the butter, and my mom came back with spaghetti sauce, a can of Parmesan cheese, a can of corn, and a big green box of spaghetti with a beautiful woman on the front. She was drawn so that her hair tumbled perfectly across the box and ended in the little plastic window, making the spaghetti look like the ends of the strands of her hair. There she was, Miss Alanius. <laughs> so I propped my pillows up in bed, had a tissue in one hand and a pencil in the other, and I wrote, Miscellaneous. The woman on green spaghetti boxes whose hair is the color of uncooked pasta and turns into spaghetti at the ends. And then I fell asleep. I got better finally over the weekend and I felt great on Monday. I turned in my homework to Mrs. Page and I sat down at my desk glad to be back at school with all my friends. I was even glad to see Forrest at our morning circle meeting. First, I want to remind you of the 10th annual vocabulary parade on Friday, said Mrs. Page. Second, oh, sorry, I hope you're all working on your word costumes, she said. Second, please remember to bring your bus money and your permission slips for our science museum field trip tomorrow. And third, instead of our usual Monday test, we're going to have a vocabulary bee today. Everyone line up by the chalkboard. I'll choose a word from the list, and after I pronounce the word, please spell it and define it. If you are correct, go to the end of the line. If you miss the word, please sit down at your desk, look it up in the dictionary, write the word five times, and define it once. Star was first with museum. M-U-S-E-U-M, a building for exhibiting objects about art or history or science, she said and she went to the back of the line. Cliff, not a high steep face of a rock, but one very tall boy, answered the word dinosaur. D-I-N-O-S-A-U-R, a prehistoric extinct reptile often huge, and he went to the back of the line. I was 10th, and when Mrs. Page called out my word, I spelled capital M-I-S-S, -S, capital A-L-A-I-N-E-U-S, and I added the woman on green spaghetti boxes whose hair is the color of uncooked pasta and turns into spaghetti at the end. There was a moment of silence in the room. I smiled at Miss Page. She waited to see if I would add anything else, and when I didn't, she grinned. Not smiled grinned, meaning to draw back the lips and bare the teeth, as in a very wide smile, and the entire class burst into one huge, giggling, laughing, falling down mass of kids. Forrest was doubled over. Star, my best friend, was laughing so hard, tears were coming out of her eyes. By now, even Mrs. Page was laughing. Pride goeth before a fall. I was sage, one who knows and shows wisdom, experience, and judgment. Sorry, let me start over. I was sage, one who shows wisdom, experience, and judgment. Why were they laughing? Wise girl with words, my dad always called me. What did I say? I was beginning to turn red, red, the color of embarrassment.
Finally, the room quieted, and Mrs. Page opened her dictionary and wrote on the chalkboard, Miscellaneous, an adjective, consisting of various kinds or qualities, a collection of unrelated objects. My jaw dropped as I looked at the spelling. My eyes bulged as I read the definition. I didn't even bother to tell anyone about my mom and the spaghetti spork and the grocery store. Humbled, aware of my shortcomings, modest and meek, I dragged back to my seat and wrote miscellaneous five times and defined it once. And that's when I remembered. I had even drawn a picture of the spaghetti box for extra credit. I was devastated, wasted and ravaged, ruined, destroyed, finished, brought to end. They called me miscellaneous for the rest of the day. Sometimes a person couldn't even get the words out before bending over with laughter. The day felt like it took a week to end. When I got off the bus, I slumped home, devastated, ruined, finished. Poor Sage. Oh, no. I told my mom the whole story, from the kitchen drawer to the grocery store to the vocabulary bee. Even my own mother laughed a little at the part about the drawing for extra credit. But at least she stopped fast and said, You know what I always say? There's gold in every mistake. Gold? A bright yellow precious metal of great value? Mistake? Something done, said, or thought in the wrong way. Impossible, I told her. Impossible. Not capable of happening. I couldn't believe I ever had to go back to school. But the next day we went to the science museum and everyone forgot all about miscellaneous at the snake exhibit and the dinosaur bone lab. Then the guide said, The field of bone archaeology has been influenced by a wide and unusual array of miscellaneous discoveries around the world. The whole class burst out laughing. The guide was pleased with himself for entertaining us so easily. And I knew, to apprehend with certainty, that my mistake was still alive and well, and nothing at all like gold. After school, I just lay on my bed and I stared at the wall. How could I have been so stupid? My mom came in and said that it was time to work on my costume for the vocabulary parade. We had finished the cape for capable, but I still needed to make the lettering down the back. Mom, I said, I can only be a mistake this year. Miss Steak. Suddenly I sat up. I looked at my mom. She looked at me. I smiled. She smiled. Sweetheart, she said, let's take another look at that cape. Hmm. I already know what's going to happen. Can you guess what's going to happen? What do you think Sage is going to be? Hmm, let's see if you're right. It took the most courage that I ever had to walk out on that stage as Miss Elanius, the queen of all miscellaneous things. But when Mr. Bell read my word and definition, everyone applauded and laughed wildly in a manner lacking all restraint and I grinned at my mom across the auditorium. Forrest came right after me, and when he bowed, his precipitation watering can hat rained on Mr. Bell's new suit, and the entire audience gasped. Then they cheered for Mr. Bell when he smiled at his soggy clothes. Did you guess she was gonna be miscellaneous? Did you think she was gonna be Miss Steak? Well, if you guessed miscellaneous, you were right, but if you guessed mistake, that would have been a good guess as well because there was definitely text evidence to support that thinking. Good job. To my astonishment, great shock and amazement, I won a gold trophy for the most original use of a word in the 10th annual vocabulary parade at my school. So this time mom was right. There was gold in this mistake. And next year, I think I'm going to be...
What do you think she's going to be next year? Let's see. Mysterious. Investigator of all things mysterious. The end. I hope you enjoyed miscellaneous, a vocabulary disaster, and enjoyed learning all of the new vocabulary words. There's also a wonderful vocabulary dictionary at the back, along with a lot of fun vocabulary activities. So if you pick up this book by Miss Deborah Frazier and read miscellaneous again, you can do some of those fun activities for vocabulary. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.